They are encouraged to help each other. It was surprising to find how such procedure not only lightens the hospital's nursing load, but also increases the patient's happiness. Dear Dr. Frenel, who had introduced this system in caring for feeble-minded children, urged me to study it in Bielefeld, where he had first seen it in operation. In that colony of mercy, as it is rightly named, I found everyone busy according to his ability and mutual helpfulness, perhaps only by working for the economic interests of the institution, or as would become the case in any well-ordered family for the support of their home. Also, while in Europe, Worcester studied the nursing profession and met with Florence Nightingale. Let me take a break here to mention that we have a lady in the audience, Beth Thompson, from the History of Nursing Archives at Boston University. And she asked if anybody knows, has any memorabilia of Florence Nightingale to get in touch with her. Her brochures are on the back table. And I thank her for contacting me and being here. Of all uh, Dr. Worcester's many interests, I think that the training of nurses consumed the most of his energies. I'll read the opening paragraph from Nurses for Our Neighbors, which explains his attitude. How to take care of the helpless is the greatest of sociological problems. Although it more immediately confronts the medical and nursing professions, it also directly concerns us all. For however vigorous any of us may be during the days of our strength, at the beginning and at the end of our lives, we are absolutely dependent on others, upon the helpfulness of those about us. Few escape at least temporary periods of helplessness at other times. And even if between our own cradles and deathbeds, any of us may be so fortunate as to escape similar conditions of helplessness, we know only too well the unlikelihood that those whose lives we love more than our own will escape such conditions. Hmm. 